finally found a good way to test the fuel pressure on a Toyota Tundra. This definitely could work on other vehicles um, that are Toyotas that have this banjo boat style. Let me zoom in here. So you have your banjo bolt on the bottom, and then there's a special adapter that comes in this testing kit I got from O'Reilly's, and a Schrader valve on top of that, which is connected to the gauge. Let's see what we're getting here. Oh, I gotta zoom out. So we're at 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. We're at 45 about, and the pressure should be 38 to 44. So. I would say that's good. A little more is better than a little less, right? But it's not the 65 that I thought I had before and that was the pump is capable of when I was just hooked up to the return line and blocking the return flow. So this is actually good news because this is telling me my, this is telling me my pressure regulator is good. So here's the um, set from O'Reilly. Uh, they even include a multimeter, but there's, there was no cables, so it's kind of pointless. I have my own, of course. But it comes with different fittings. The fitting I'm using looks just like this. I can't get that side off, but that's okay. So that's the side that has the hole, the banjo style, and goes down. What you're doing basically is replacing this. So you want to take this off, um, this fuel dampener, right out of the banjo bolt area, and put on, and I use a 7 8 wrench for that and then replace with this and you screw it down in um, and then that way the fuel pressure can go through here and up out this valve here and that's where you take your measurement so that was the missing piece you can order those and to remove that fuel damper while you're doing it it's basically the only way i could find because you can't just there's no Schrader valve anywhere, and as a fuel pressure regulator, it's bolted on, so you can't really get between that onto the fuel rail. So let's check what we're at here. I'm gonna give it a little gas. Seems to be running pretty nicely right now. Uh, I turn you sideways, but don't worry. You can read upside down. Um, so we're at 44. <laughs> whoops so even at up to uh, 3,000 rpms it looks like the fuel pressure is now, now I, can feel my engine start to... I can feel the engine start to kind of bog down and kind of get rough idle and look it's at like 500 rpm where it's supposed to be more up to 700 or so and this is where I'm having my problem I can't figure out and also with starting so I'm gonna turn it off. Let's see if it can start. So that was fine, but then, you know, that range is fine. And if I turn on the AC, that kind of brings it up a little bit because it has that uh, little sensor wire that when you turn the AC on, it should bring up the idle a little bit to handle the extra load, like if you're um, not moving. But yeah, like 500, and then I get all shaky. Everything's shaking in here. And that's all fine and good. It'll run like that for a long time, and it'll be fine. No problem, but it's just sometimes when I go to start, it will not start on the first try. It'll go... This one, you just flick, it's a flick start, flick, and then you wait five seconds, nothing, didn't start, but it tried, dug -a -dug -a -dug -a, turning over. Second time, third time, sometimes up to five times. But now that it's kind of warmed up and flowing, it's starting right up. But I'll come back here in an hour and try it and see what I get. And that, that kind of low, and that kind of shakiness at this low idle, even a, even a normal idle, it shouldn't be vibrating too much. You think that's the motor mounts? I can definitely feel like a pulsing, like dun, 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 dun. 
not too bad, but you can hear it in the exhaust, that's for sure. Still at the same pressure. And even with this gauge, you can even let a little fuel out. Make sure it's flowing. Oh, now we're bouncing. But that may have to do more with because I drained a little fuel there. Let me push. Still bouncing. That could be indicative of something though. If I'm getting that, the fuel pressure is kind of kicking around, maybe that's why I'm getting that vroom, 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 vroom. I'm not sure. Oh, dude, hold on a second. So I left the, <laughs> I was testing the, um, camshaft sensor and I left it unplugged. I gotta get this. I keep getting the air of the camshaft sensor on PO340 and you can hear it. it really doesn't make a difference either way if it's plugged in or not. So I'm thinking it's not getting the signals but I tested tested the wires and I tested the um, AC voltage and it seemed to correspond with the RPMs of the engine uh, going up and I tested against on the FJ Cruiser, same engine, and they both match and I swapped the sensor as well. So I don't think it's that but it's possible it could be the wiring going up so I have to check at the ECU what values I'm getting and that would be my last thing to check here. Trying to figure out if that I'm getting the OBD code, so why am I getting that? Camshaft sensor. Just two wires going straight back to the ECU. Somehow that it's um, picking up an error. So I gotta figure that out. 